this is Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today... The opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Yeah. That who we are and who God... At home, we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for Sam, they should go and pray and then she will receive and then she will come back. A very good morning, dear viewer. This is Captain TV, your Catholic identity. Welcome to our program again, Missions of Hope. Always on Tuesday, be there, walk with us, let us hope together. And today we have a group of great men of God. We are going to hear what they are doing. And it's not their first time. We have had some subsequent program with them the Comboni missionaries, but today we have a different group telling us what are the Kombonis doing in Kenya for the last 50 years. Romans chapter 12, verse 12, the Bible tells us, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Karibu, ndugu mtazamaji. But before we begin our prayer, I request one of our brothers to begin with the word of prayer, this brother. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this morning you have given us. We entrust the day into your hands. We entrust this, our program into your hands. As we talk about the Kumbuni missionaries, our presence here in Kenya, we pray that this may be an inspiration to others, so that we may join hands together in the evangelization mission of the church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Send Daniel Kumboni, pray Amen. for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, brothers. Welcome. Thank we have you, had Thank you. some brothers here in, in this program telling us different activities that you are doing uh, in Kenya and uh, in offering hope to the society. And today, in a special way, we are going to know and to understand before these brothers become brothers, what are some of the steps that they take that include the initial stages. And uh, today we are going to deal with a special stage that is called the Scholasticate. But before we go there, I want you to introduce yourself to the viewers. Who are you? Which country are you from? At least they know you are from Komboni. Welcome, brother. Mm. Thank you, sister. Uh, my name is Oklo Komla Elize. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Togo, West Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in my formation, basic formation in the scholasticate of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sister. You're welcome to the studio, Thank brother. You. Yeah, I'm called Winfred Echejikunu. Mm -hmm. I'm from Ghana. I've, I was assigned to Kenya three years ago, so I've been in Kenya for quite a time, mm -hmm. during the scholastics also, mm -hmm. the theology. Okay. Welcome. Brother Winifred <laughs> and Brother Elise are in the studio. Welcome, brothers, and uh, maybe you, you let Thank our viewers understand what is this we call scholasticate. Maybe I begin with Brother Elise. When somebody is hearing, those are big terms in the, in the, in the church. It, they may be, look simple, but maybe for the common Mwanainti or whoever is watching us through Caption TV, in a simpler term, what is this stage? Okay, sister. Uh, the scholastic is uh, the last stage of basic formation of Comboni missionaries, mm -hmm. common in, commonly known as uh, Theologate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the last stage that prepare us directly for the mission. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. Maybe when you say it's the last stage, Winifred, where have you come from until you reach this stage, the last stage? Yeah. What is that process? Yeah, the journey to the priesthood does not start in a day. It mm -hmm. starts in a day, but it does not end that very day. Mm -hmm. We begin first with aspirancy, 
where you come to get in touch with the Kumbuni missionaries, basically to know them, know who are they as in the very beginning of their life. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you go to the prepostulancy. That is the stage where the Kumbonis now come to know you better. Mm -hmm. They try to d visit the family, visit the home, try to introduce you to what the Kumbonis missionaries are. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you go to the postulancy. Now the postulancy is the stage where you begin with the philosophical studies. Mm -hmm. That is now a basic necessi necessity in the church for those going to the priesthood. Then after that, three years, you are admitted to the novitiate. Mm -hmm. It can be anywhere, either for the Anglophone in Uganda and then Zambia for, or for the Francophone, mm -hmm. either in Congo, Chad or Benin. Mm -hmm. Then finally, you are assigned to the scholastics. Mm -hmm. So the scholastics, as we say, is the last stage of our formation. Mm -hmm. So that is where you study the theology. Okay. Yeah. So what is involved, what happens when one is in this stage of scholasticate? It is the final stage, yes. What happens and how long does it take? Okay, sister, this uh, last stage of basic formation mm -hmm. uh, takes four years mm -hmm. here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a time for you as a, a new professor to ID identify yourself mm -hmm. with uh, the charism uh, the formation based on uh, interculturality mm -hmm. and uh, your mm -hmm. personal relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. the one who called you personally, mm -hmm. and we leave that one in community, sharing responsibilities mm -hmm. and uh, growing together in faith and vocation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for one to be, uh, you have said you have different. Uh, Scholastic at houses. What what happened? How do you, are you the one who choose where to go or what happened, Brother Winifred? Yeah, at the towards the end of the novitiate, mm -hmm. you are asked to. We have about uh, eleven houses of formation for the theology, internationally spread across the four continents. Mm -hmm. So towards the end of the novitiate, you are asked to choose three with valid reasons. Mm -hmm. Now you choose the three, and your provincial also makes proposals. Okay, I want my student to be here, to be here. He also gives his reason. Mm -hmm. But the final recommendation or assignment comes from the general. Mm -hmm. So there can be cases where you choose various places you want to go. Then the general might think, this time we don't need you to go here for your theology, but we need you to go to this particular theology house for your theological studies or the scholastic kit. Mm -hmm. So basically, it is a dialogue, as okay. we usually say in our institute. Mm -hmm. it's, you enter into dialogue with both the, the candidates, the formators, the provincial, and then the general council. Mm -hmm. So I can feel like, because it is in my country, I say I just <laughs> want to remain at home. Can that be a valid reason to be in that particular uh, scholastic kit house in your, in your country? <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. Okay. And I will say, mm. as a missionary, mm. we are taught and we learn how to be open mm -hmm. to the will of God. Yeah. And we have like uh, 11 formation house mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on the need and some criteria, mm -hmm. they can assign you to any of them. Mm. We have in um, Peter Meersburg in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We have in uh, Asmara, Eritrea. We have in Cape Coast, Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have in Lima, Peru. We have in Gras, Austria. We have in uh, Granada, Spain. Mm -hmm. We have in uh, Nairobi here, yeah. where we are currently. Yeah. And uh, we have in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. Ghana. And we have m in many, many countries, 11. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, brothers. Um, um, maybe this, uh, uh, the scholastic stage, and this program is Missions of Hope. Mm -hmm. How does it offer hope when you are there? How do you offer hope to the society? Because we know you are uh, doing studies, but uh, how do you offer hope? Maybe do you only offer hope to the students that you are in, or there is a time that you go out of your of your scholastic, I mean. Yeah. Okay, for us, being a missionary congregation and the scholastic is not 
only for studies, though the main focus is studies. Mm -hmm. We also have the pastoral dimension of the scholastic kids. So what happens is during the weekends, each scholastic is sent out to a particular community, be it an outstation, a parish, or even a center, mm -hmm. where we share our life, we share the joy of the gospel mm -hmm. with all those that we meet there. Mm -hmm. And currently, we are in various parts in both at Nairobi Archdiocese and then in Gong Diocese. Okay. And in Gong Diocese, we are under the cathedral. We work in three house stations. Mm -hmm. That's in, uh, Saint, uh, we work in three house stations here. Okay. We work in, uh, in Gong Cathedral. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the house stations there. We have a uh, Okay. The name yeah. has gone. The name, yeah, <laughs> but okay. in Ingongo, so we work in uh, mm -hmm. Napenda Kuishi, which is basically for the Kumbuni missionaries. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then still in Ingongo, we work in Sacred Heart, mm -hmm. an outstation of St. Ignatius. We are also in the parish. Mm -hmm. Then coming to Kariobangi, we work in, coming to Nairobi, we work in Kariobangi Parish, we work in Mbakasi Parish, we work in Kibera, mm -hmm. High Rise, and then Olympics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, these are the places where we are sent to give this hope because without sh though we, they, we will say we are not priests but we go there to share the little that we can mm -hmm. be with the PMC be with the street children or even be with the Jumia be with the CMA, CWA so there are various activities that we do without forgetting also the youth mm -hmm. who are the future of the church okay. so we journey with them in this journey of life Thank you. Brother Elise. Yes, where do you go and what touches you in the apostolate that you go to do? Okay. Mm. Uh, in continuity of what he said, mm. we are also mm. in Olikeri, Olikasasi, and Ololua. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, myself, I go to Mbakasi. Mm -hmm. and, and in the parish is St. Daniel Komboni Parish, mm -hmm. Mbakasi. Mm -hmm. And there I work and learn mm -hmm. with youth, mm -hmm. with Jumuya. And uh, one particularity is also the visiting to the sick and elderly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a sign of hope being with them, mm -hmm. listening to them, sharing hope with them, mm -hmm. consoling them is a sign of hope also. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a sign of hope. And what we do is to live with uh, those people. and. Um, to, to share what we have mm -hmm. most with them is the time, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, to share those time with them. Uh, they are, for us, we, we took for the founder and uh, we live with those people who are mm, poorest and most abandoned. Yeah. What uh, those Pope Francis called the um, people at the periphery and the margins of our society. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? Because Swahili is part of what... Uh, or they all understand English, <laughs> those you visit. <laughs> okay. How are you doing as far as Swahili is concerned, or Kikuyu or other language, the, yeah. where you go? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, as a Komboni missionary, mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we do is to, to learn the local language wherever we go. Okay. Though this stage is most for studies, mm. but mm, during the holidays, we, t we take two months mm -hmm. to get some basic in Swahili mm -hmm. in, in order to make it uh, light, no? Mm -hmm. Not too difficult to speak yeah. or to, to extend with people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. To see Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yes, Brother Winfred. Yeah. You know Winfred in Kenya here is a name for ladies, but we have Brother Winfred. Don't be surprised, dear viewer. It is a name for men. In Ghana. In Ghana, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So what about you? What uh, do you go the same place and or what do you mm. how do you carry out your apostolate in offering hope? Yeah, for me I do my apostolate in uh, Sacred Heart, an outstation of Second Nature's Parish. This one is located around Masai Lodge. That's where I do my apostolate. And I usually go on the weekends, Saturday sometimes and Sundays. Basically, what I do is that I try to journey mainly with the PMC, mm -hmm. the MYM, and then the youth. These are the basic groups that I journey with. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it's just a moment we live together, we share 
the word of God, we see how as youth or as young people, even our children being the future of the church, mm -hmm. how do we instill this Catholic identity in them so that the future of the church, we don't lose members or we don't now go to churches, our churches that we don't, we find only old people there and then our youth are walking around. So that's what basically we do, how to help our church, our youth find their identity mm -hmm. and their place within the church, which is ever changing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can mention some of them because some some youth they say mm, going to the church you just go there you get bored. Maybe some of the tricks that you use to attract the youth to the church. Somebody is watching and maybe is a PMC moderator or youth moderator, and he or she would like to pick some of the activities that you do to help the youth to be in the church. Okay, for me personally, I believe in the in the apostolate of presence. You no. Know? Mm. Where you are there, you don't talk much. You j by your life, people come to realize that yes, this is something that is a beautiful thing to embrace. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes when you see people going the other way around, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I sometimes maybe encourage them, maybe encouraging one or two to take up a responsibility in the church. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's somebody who might want to be a lector, but is feeling shy. How do you? encourage such a person to become a lector. Mm -hmm. There's somebody who wants to be a mass server in the church, who wants to be an animator of the PMC. How do you... So sometimes I, I see that maybe this person is very good in this particular aspect. Sometimes you have to approach. Yeah. Sometimes also you just... The life you live also attracts others to Christ. Mm -hmm. So it is, up to, it is also a challenge on me to live a life which is like Christ-like, to, not to live a life which would dist distract others or send others away from Christ. Mm -hmm. And basically also we enter into dialogue. Like in my place, we came up with a monthly catechesis where we we share monthly on a specific topic mm -hmm. about maybe what is concerning the youth. For instance, then we discuss. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, with the PMC, what I personally do with them is that we share the word of the gospel, only the gospel. Mm -hmm. They may be like this length, I took them through some of the teachings of Lent, mm -hmm. simple teachings about Lent, maybe what is Lent, how many Sundays, what are the colors. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I give them a challenge. This week when you go to school, give one sweet to your classmates. Mm -hmm. If you are a noise maker, be, a, be silent for at least just a day. Mm -hmm. Just some simple, simple things. Yeah. That is basically what I do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Uh, what does... Uh, it, what is the difference between a scholasticate and the person beginning, uh, beginning the journey to priesthood in Komboni? In short, what, da, what identifies a scholasticate as far as the Komboni missionaries are concerned? Okay, thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. uh, and since we are called by the same person, Christ, yeah. I think there is no much difference. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, being formed, mm -hmm. allow yourself to be formed, mm -hmm. we can say the first stage mm -hmm. when you start the journey is uh, the postulancy mm -hmm. uh, with the study of um, philosophy, but also they introduce you to the congregation no? mm -hmm. knowing companies more mm -hmm. and uh, after that you will request to go to the novitiate mm -hmm. uh, where we know about our founder uh, consecrated life mm -hmm. because as a company we are consecrated person mm -hmm. with vows okay. chastity mm -hmm. obedient and mm -hmm. poverty mm -hmm. then in the novitiate you you know about it mm -hmm. and you improve your Spiritual life there is mm -hmm. where we, it's like uh, it is in the novice that we are cooked as mm -hmm. company missionaries. We are cooked. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so all this time you are not being cooked. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, life is a journey and yeah, formation so it, also is a journey. Yeah, we cannot say yeah, today yeah. I'm fully yeah, yeah. formed yeah. because we are saying it, now we are in the basic formation. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, the formation is ongoing. Okay. Ongoing. Okay. Yeah. When does one get the evangelical council as, as a combine? Is it at this stage or after, be, uh, shortly before ordination? Yeah, the evangelical councils, we take them at the end of the novitiate. So at the okay. end of the novitiate, you mm -hmm. take your first vows mm -hmm. of chastity, poverty, and obedience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that is the stage then now you begin each year you renew your vow because you don't overlook that ah this person has taken the vow so he's going to the end mm. maybe at the end of the year i can feel that maybe this is not mm -hmm. the call of god for me mm. then i might decide that, okay i want to go back because for us we believe that each day is a moment of discernment mm -hmm. we are not perfect in our discernment journey it takes time it takes a struggle mm -hmm. it takes our communication with god mm -hmm. so for us but then you become a kumboni with through the evangelical councils of poverty chastity and obedience when you take your first vow mm -hmm. so when does one do the perpetual vows yeah you do the perpetual vow after this stage of formation we do after the scholar's kit. Now, okay, okay. for us, mm. after the scholar's kit, you are sent into one of our communities mm -hmm. to have an experience, and we call it the missionary service. It is attached to this stage of the formation, mm. not that it is separated. It is now doing a more close pastoral, because in our community, we are from 14 nationalities. Mm -hmm. We are 28 student candidates with three formators. Mm -hmm. So being in a big group, you might feel always the comfort, the joy, the sorrows, the struggles, and all those. But now, when you assign as a priest to the mission, you go and meet, maybe you are two or three. Mm -hmm. So already after the scholar's kit, you are sent to a community of two or three to stay with them, to now live your life more closely, mm -hmm. what you want to live. You know? So after that, which usually goes for a year, you will request to take your final vow, your perpetual vow. Okay. Yeah, so it is at the end of the pastoral experience mm -hmm. that you take your perpetual vow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Does it entail passing exam of being <laughs> a Christian? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that stage is not about exam, yeah. but now the witness. The witness. And it's also, the, since being a, mm. the last stage, mm. it's also when you discern your vocation, more and more mm -hmm. because you are going to take the perpetual vow it okay. is not that when you take it today that you t tomorrow you say i'm tired yeah. so that d being in a community of two or three mm -hmm. is now where you live more closely the challenges now become very close to you the situations on the ground maybe you are in a parish mm -hmm. you feel the situation on a daily basis how do you take it so we don't usually do exam but your own witness of life mm -hmm would tell whether you have passed the exam. Mm. As a, a life is an exam already, so yeah. there that we know that whether you are you are passing well your exam or you are still mm -hmm. struggling a bit with it. Okay. Thank you, Brother Winfred. Do you have mm. anything to add on that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that stage of yeah. missionary service yeah. is uh, a time for us to live in a community setup mm -hmm. with uh, a few number because now we are 28 with three four meters mm -hmm. we are 31 yeah. but in a community setup you can be three four and continue trying to live to live what you have acquired during your formation yeah. setup yeah. okay thank you very much thank you dear viewer in the studio i am with the brother winifred and brother elise from Comboni missionaries this is mission of hope program continuing the conversation continues do not go away because we have more to get from the Komboni missionaries who are celebrating 50 years of their existence in kenya and during the break we shall see where is this uh, uh, house situated here in nairobi uh, through a clip that my director is going to show you do not go away Keep watching Captain TV, your Catholic identity. This is Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today... The opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Yeah that who we are and who God At home, we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for Sam, you should go and pray and then you will receive and then you will come back.
opportunity to thank the almighty god for such an opportunity to express ourselves pray for us we need your prayers yeah. that who we are and who god at home mm-hmm. we used to pray every day if you want to pray for some this you go and pray and then you will receive and then you come back to and in particular students who are at the scholasticate level and they have explained to us what it means and what are some of the activities that they are carrying out. Uh, I am with Brother Winfred and Brother Elise. Brother Winfred, you from Ghana, <laughs> West <laughs> Africa, people from Ghana, we have your son in the studio and uh, you looked so and said it is a comboni. I want to be a Komboni. What do you like about being a Komboni? And particularly, what do you admire about Komboni as a person? Okay, let me start with what I admire from the founder. Mm -hmm. Very lucky enough, my pl the place I come from, the church is named after St. Daniel Komboni. Mm -hmm. So growing up as a child, I've been hearing about Komboni here and every year mm -hmm. during the Feast of the Parish. And... But now, for me, what I like about Komboni himself was his courage. Mm -hmm. Because during that time, he wanted to go to Japan. But there was a Father Angelo Vinko who came to, back from Sudan to Italy and shared the story of Sudan. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I want to go to Africa. Mm -hmm. And he will go to the extent to say Africa or death. For Komboni, Africa or death. That means he said, I go to Africa or I die. Mm -hmm. So for me, that zeal, and he went closely with that zeal all his life. Even leaving his mom was one of the most difficult tasks for him. Mm -hmm. Because being the only child of eight surviving, eight children, all of them died, remaining him alone. They were expecting him to be a diocesan at least, to stay around, to visit them on weekends, yeah. on during the break and all those things. Mm -hmm. But he went and told them that I'm going to Africa. Mm -hmm. So being a parent, of course, it is normal for you to wail. Mm -hmm. And there's something that we used to say that on the day Kombuni was to leave for Africa, 
the mother of it about i don't know how many masses that oh my son has to come back he cannot go mm -hmm. but at the end of the day he went yeah and bear in mind that that day there was nothing like phone computer to mm -hmm. so most of his communication with his mom was through letters mm -hmm. and arriving in africa all those he went with they all died remaining him alone this could have given him the chance to say that ah sasa even that i cannot continue <laughs> but <laughs> he went ahead <laughs> mm -hmm. and stayed there mm -hmm. wrote a lot of letters even the church was almost saying that ah, at the end of the day we have to close the mission in africa mm -hmm. he said no it's not time to close the mission in africa we have to continue yeah. and that was what kept us and along the line he has to found the kumbuni missionaries he founded the kumbuni sisters and all other family the kumbuni family is a big family so for me the zeal of our founder is what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are called as community missionaries to go to the toughest mission, to be the poorest and most abandoned. Mm -hmm. And that's what Pope Francis says, that we are called to the peripheries of the world. Mm -hmm. Those that nobody cares about. Yeah. The less abandoned. And all those kind of... So for me, the zeal is enough for me mm -hmm. as a community missionary. Okay. Thank you, Brother Winfred. Brother Elise from Togo. Yes, sister. Yes. What what attracted you to Komboni missionaries? I know there are other other congregations, but you particularly chose Komboni. Is it because it was the only one around your parish or what? Okay, <laughs> don't be surprised, sister. I'm yeah. from um, uh, OFM parish. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, uh, Captain <laughs> Franciscans. <laughs> and I joined Komboni. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, what attracted me is his faith, his strong faith mm -hmm. in Christ mm -hmm. and uh, his zeal for mission and what he did mm -hmm. until the end of his life mm -hmm. in 1881. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you saw, I want to be a Komboni. Yes. What was that journey? Uh, how did you come to know that you wanted to be to be in priesthood and not a doctor in Togo and treat people those who are in the periphery? <laughs> Thank you, sister. Yeah. Uh, uh, the journey started, mm -hmm. and the um, the main focus was not to become a priest, yeah. or mm -hmm. but to discover as a Catholic, a young person, mm -hmm. what can I do in my church? Mm -hmm. What can I know mm -hmm. and how can I live as a Catholic youth? Yeah. And it is how it started because mm -hmm. I was doing law that mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. yeah, in university. Mm -hmm. But God is God, mm -hmm. here I am now. Look at you, <laughs> look at <laughs> what he does. In, even if you go to the law, if he has said he will need you, he will snatch you from there. So thank you, uh, Brother Elise, uh, Brother Winfred. You are in the community of different nationalities. How many nationalities are there, especially here in your scholastic? Yeah, in our scholastic, we boast of 14 nationalities. 14? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you mention some few? Yeah, we are from Vietnam, mm -hmm. that's in Asia. We are from Colombia, mm -hmm. we are from Uganda, we are from from Ghana, of course, mm -hmm. from Togo, from Benin, mm -hmm. from Congo. We have also from Peru, mm -hmm. Mozambique, Ethiopia. Yeah. Central Africa. Central okay. Africa. Mexico. Wow. Thank you. Colombia. Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> How was that culture? Being able to live together in that cross cultural, uh, people from different groups not even mm. different group no, countries but also from different ethnic groups and you are able to live together how does that how how did that one come out for you as a person from togo that you are able to live with uh, somebody from ghana how is it easy to live community life with different nationalities e yes uh, our formation is also based on integral cultural formation okay to be able to live everywhere you will go mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and uh, it is a journey that started from the postulancy mm. the postulancy we are in from three nationalities mm -hmm. the novitiate six and now 14. Mm -hmm. and uh, for me it's a, a very very beautiful thing to live mm -hmm. and i come to learn many things from 
my brothers from other countries. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think that mm -hmm. will help me a lot. A lot. Yes. Was there a culture shock in terms of food, ugali, and what have you? How was it? I understand people from Togo d do not take fresh milk. Is it true that they only take powder milk? Powdered milk. Okay. Was it a shock for <laughs> you? <laughs> because here in Kenya we milk cows and take that milk. Uh, from mm. the novitiate, yeah. we were told we will encounter many cultures mm -hmm. and it is up to us to be open. Mm. And the first thing I enjoy mm. and I want to take this morning again is mm. the milk mm. mixed with charcoal ashes. Oh, West Muru Pokot. sick. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's very nice. Very nice, very nice. This is called Muru sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Though we, we don't have a... Mm. We, in Togo, we have different type of foods mm -hmm. here also. Mm -hmm. But uh, I find that the day I will go, I will go with some of the foods from Kenya. Okay, yes. like Murusik. Yes. And in <laughs> <laughs> do they milk? Mm -hmm. Do they milk the cows at home? Yes. Okay. In the northern part of Togo. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what about Brother Winfred? What do you like the beauty of living together as a community and? people from different cultures. And what can you say, especially in Kenya, we have a problem as far as tribalism is co concerned. How can you advise uh, in the perspective of you living together as a community and now to the larger community of Kenya where you are and you are celebrating 50 years? Yeah, I think for me, one of the, I think it is the call of Christ to bring all of us together. Mm -hmm. And once I see each other as a Christ, another Christ, mm -hmm. the image of God, it makes me to feel free to live with a person. Most of the time we judge because maybe the cultures is not like mine, yeah. or I feel that mine is better than the other one. But when we see that all cultures are the same, it helps me to appreciate. Mm -hmm. In our community, one of the things that we do, we give each culture the opportunity to share with us so, I, so that I don't say that, ah, in Colombia, this is how they do. In Mozambique, this is how they do. But I hear the story as it is. Mm -hmm. Videos are shown. Mm -hmm. The food is even cooked. Because I don't know, tomorrow I might be sent to Mozambique. Mm -hmm. I might be sent to Ethiopia. Now you go to Ethiopia, they say it in general. Mm -hmm. Now what will I say? Yeah. Now, so that we learn. It's also about openness. Mm -hmm. And also the trust for the conference. Because now, if my brother cook a food from their tribe, for me it might look strange. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that is, all they are, that is their food. So do I take it or I just let it go? Mm -hmm. That is what basically I think. Mm -hmm. We need to be open to learn mm -hmm. and to accept that our culture is not the best, no, mm -hmm. or this culture is the best, but we are all of the same culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are there other formation houses uh, that uh, the combined missionaries have in the world? Yes, sister. And is the system the same, like uh, we see? You see, like the Catholic Church is universal. Yeah. Now, the formation, if you have formation house and that scholasticate level, is it the same studies that you do where the others are? Yes, sister. Mm. It's the same st stage of formation, mm -hmm. theology, but in different countries, different languages, mm -hmm. but it's the same. Okay. Because one part of the formation is the theology studies, mm -hmm. but also the formation as a company missionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Brother Winfred, anything you can add on that? Yeah, I think also mm. we, what happens is also the context. Mm. Like here in Kenya, we don't do anything on liberation theology, but if mm. you go to Peru, mm. Brazil, where we are doing, they do liberation theology. Mm. Here in Africa, we do African theology. So it, maybe these few courses might be different, but as has been said, mm -hmm. the centrality of our formation is still there. Mm -hmm. That's apart from the studies, we have the pastoral, deeper relationship with the founder and the preparation for the future mission. Mm -hmm. So that is basically, but if not, our formation is the same. Probably. Okay. Thank you. You have said Komboni missionaries are supposed to be in the periphery where there is people with the more, okay, marginalized. What are some of the character traits or what are you needed as a young man to be able to live in such a situation? You have talked about being in Pokot. Yes. What, what are you required to have? <laughs> not, not like the body, because it's the body you have, mm -hmm. but what is the requirement that mm -hmm. one needs to be able 
to live with those kind of people and to serve them in terms mm. of uh, spirituality because sometimes you can be sent somewhere and you feel why did they have to bring me here mm. yeah okay mm -hmm. i think is to be open mm -hmm. for any reality mm. and uh, also to build your personal relationship with christ the one who called you mm -hmm. and other things will come Mm -hmm. And you will do, sister. Do you have an experience, a beautiful experience that you went through that you can recall? In West I, yes. Pocot? Yeah. Many of them. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. want, want to, uh, to encourage the people maybe mm -hmm. who, are being going to, who are going to be sent tomorrow for such kind of a mission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, mm -hmm. there are people who love really, really. Mm -hmm. When you arrive, they don't know you. Okay, yeah. they mm -hmm. will take time to know you. Yeah. But if you are open to them mm -hmm. and you mingle with them, you go even to samba with them, yeah. you will enjoy sister. Mm -hmm. yes. And dancing. Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they love to dance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Elise has been with the Pokots and uh, the people from East or West Pokot, we love you, we, li we love your dancing. Keep dancing. Brother Winfred, have you ever been to such places? Yeah, I was in mm. South Sudan. Oh, South Sudan. Just last year for a period of two months mm -hmm. in a part called Le. And then for me, it was a beautiful experience that I had. Mm -hmm. This was a place that the people were torn apart by war. Mm -hmm. You could feel, feel the ravages of war, the destruction caused there, but they were still loving, they were still willing to, sh to listen to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to... We do all, most of our missions on foot. Mm -hmm. It was a community of 350 kilometers with 110 outstations wow. and one priest. Wow. So when Jesus said the harvest is rich, yeah. but the laborers are few, it is really true. Mm -hmm. The harvest is really rich. Mm -hmm. That's why we, we still pray for vocations now because mm -hmm. it's not... When I went, I really felt the need for people. Mm -hmm. And that gospel really was one of the things which guided me throughout my experience in Le mm -hmm. in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brothers. You have something to add yes, now? Yes, maybe uh, it has come <laughs> now. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I say I was in uh, Kacheliba, mm -hmm. uh, Amakuriat, but we also have communities in Lodua and Lokicha, mm -hmm. that is Turkana side. Yeah. We have also in Masabit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's almost the same culture, mm. although... Yes. Mm. Um, Kateliba, mm. Amakuria, and uh, Tukana side, mm. they are pastoralists. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And did you ever go to to mm. the place where they are, or did you ever find, because there is a, a story about them fighting among us themselves, any incidents when you went for peace building or what? No. 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 Okay, no, thank I you. Did not. Yeah. Okay. We are almost coming to the end of this program. The brothers in the studio have talked to us and extended on how they offer mission as at this stage of Scholasticate. And if you are there and you are interested to know about the Komboni missionaries, keep watching because we have more programs that are coming with the Komboni missionaries and especially because this year they are celebrating 50 years of their existence and missionary work in Kenya. Brother Winfred, if some young man is looking and watching at us and would wish to join the Komboni missionary, maybe he's a Kenyan or out of, the Ken of, out of Kenya, what should one have? I know you have said, but it's no harm um, to repeat. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm. The call to the religious life, the Komboni missionaries, first you must be a baptized, confirmed Catholic, no? because mm -hmm. we don't want somebody who is not a Catholic. It's not that we don't want somebody who is not a Catholic. Yeah. But it's a necessity for the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And also, he must have completed a certain level of education. Maybe high school have, might have completed high school, preparing for the university. Yeah. Or even in the university, he have completed. As my brother here who was in the university and God picked him from yes. nowhere. Mm -hmm. So either you are in the university or you have completed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are called any part of the world. Mm -hmm. Especially where we are, you are called to just visit any Kumbuni parish, wherever. Yeah. Our community is close. In Kenya here, the one who is in charge of us is uh, the vocations is Father John Coril. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the mission and vocations promoter. But each and every one of us, as a community missionary, is a vocation promoter. Okay. 
So if you can see me anywhere, you can meet me. Those who might want to call us also, they have, they feel free to call us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And get to know more about yeah. you. Thank you, brothers, for coming. And now, before we end this program, do you have any closing remark for anybody who is watching us? Uh, just a word of hope, uh, because this program is Missions of Hope. Yes, sister. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to thank uh, Captain TV mm -hmm. and for this opportunity. And uh, also thank every person mm -hmm. who is giving hand in our formation journey. Mm -hmm. And to tell people that they can feel free to contribute in this hope mm. for the mission. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Brother Elise, Brother Winfred. Yeah, mine is a word of encouragement to the youth, the young ones, and us. But Francis said in one of his vocation Sunday messages that the call to the vocation, the missionary life, be it a sister, a brother, or whatever, is a risk. Mm -hmm. Because the, God did not call us on the phone to tell us that, ah, I want you to become my yeah. worker, but it yeah. is that discernment which helps us. So mm. the young ones shouldn't be afraid yeah. to embrace this risk, mm. this vocation. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing for me, being in it for seven years now, I think. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best things I think God has done for me, mm -hmm. God has given me. Mm -hmm. So they shouldn't be afraid to embrace this call. And to our viewers who might want to contact us and say, ah, where do I get the kombonis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can contact us on this number, 0741-976846. Repeat. 0741-976846. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much, brothers, for being courageous enough to come and represent your other <laughs> brothers in the scholasticate and for all what you have been able to to, to tell our viewers and to tell us. Mine is to wish you all the best in your formation journey. This is a beautiful life that God has called mm. you to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very you much. Very Thank you very much, dear viewer, for being with us for the last minute uh for listening to us as they narrated about the consul uh, sorry Komboni missionaries the scholastic stage of formation it has been i sister esther Muturi, and brother winfred and brother elize from the Komboni missionary scholastic in nairobi until next tuesday god bless you Done. Okay, sir. Done. <laughs>Jesus Christ became one of us to save us and to show us how to live as God's children. He called and sent out disciples to evangelize everyone everywhere in the world. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. In a world hungering for basic needs, hope, justice and peace with some celebrating mass under trees, there exists a beam of light. St. Patrick's Missionary Society. As baptized Christians, we are all stakeholders in this divine mission.
Today, we extend a kind invitation to all Christians to wake up to the missionary mandate and collaborate with us to promote the mission of Christ through the Church. At the forefront of this noble cause are the St. Patrick's missionary priests, commonly known as Kiltigan Fathers. They are tireless.